Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. As Miles said, I'm Erin Harris, and our panelists for today's presentation are Amkar Kaliker, PhD, Head of Manufacturing and Supply Chain at Next Gen Therapies Consulting at Deloitte, and Donna Rill. She is the Chief Technology Officer at Triumvira Immunologics. I'm thrilled that they're here with us today to share their extensive knowledge on our topic. And I'd also like to thank Integris for partnering with Cell and Gene on this event. Um, we have two poll questions for you, like Miles said, and the first one is actually gonna come up really soon, so please be on the lookout for that. Also, we'll be taking your questions near the end of our presentation, so go ahead and submit them via the Q&A tool when you think of them, and we'll get to as many as we can toward the end, like I said. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, as the patient's immune cells are starting materials, inherent biological variability exists, and batch-to-batch -batch variability means the entire production process is a constant balancing act of adjusting processes to create this standardization. Um, there is variability in both autologous and allogeneic cell therapies, and analytical challenges also exist, uh, and, and we will get to all of that. But before we do, I'd love to level set this conversation. Um, and so, Donna, I'd like to start with you. First of all, welcome. Thanks for being here today. And uh, please do kick us off by explaining to us what, what in fact are the root causes of potential batch-to-batch -batch variability. Well, the leading problem comes with the incoming seed material, whether it's whole blood or leukapheresis. Um, and that's due to the patients have various treatment backgrounds, uh, different stages of hematological reconstitution, depending on those treatments. So that is automatically going to cause variation in that incoming seed material. Um, and, and, you know, we'll talk about that as we go through it, but there are means to control that. The other biggest variation I find is in the manufacturing processes themselves. Uh, more often, early stage companies are um, using very manual processes, and the staffs are marginally trained to do the rote assays and don't have a lot of um, experience in managing those variabilities and what to do when they do occur to assure that you get the desired outcome. Sure, and that makes a lot of sense. And we actually hear that quite a bit too on Cell and Gene of that the training of manufacturing uh, skilled labor is very, um, very, very difficult to handle and very difficult to bring um, kind of on the same same page. So uh, with that, I'd like to actually ask Amkar the same question. You know, what, from your from your training and expertise, what are the root causes of potential batch-to-batch -batch variability? Um, yeah, and, and thank you, Erin, for having me here. Um, I, I think no one could have explained it better than the way Donna just put it out there, right? Um, the fact, like, I actually wanted to start by saying that's a level set on what we're referring to as variability, because uh, in the small molecule world, when you had a well-defined recipe and you had well-characterized ingredients whose composition like you can define very well, you follow the recipe, you get the same outcome each time. Right here, we're dealing with biological material, as Donna mentioned. There's a lot of variability <clears throat> in the biology of these cells itself. Your cells are going to be different than my cells, no matter how similarly we uh, treat them. Right, And so instead of calling these as root causes, Aaron, I would actually call these as contributing factors to batch to batch variability. And here's why I think there's a difference between the two terms, root cause versus contributing factors, right? Uh, in general, we know that heterogeneity of the source material, your handling and manufacturing procedures, your release criteria, analytical characterization, the final drug delivery, the medical state of the patient, all of these potentially contribute to batch to batch variability. But it's up to you as a manufacturer to actually truly lay out your end to end product journey and figure out those root causes, figure out those pressure points, which which truly cause a high degree of uh, variability in your and in your final uh, drug product. And we can talk a little bit more about how we've been actually um, helping some of our partners in this uh, it, doing something like this. But uh, I just wanted to level set on like you know the root cause versus um, something that contributes towards variability. 